So how do we select a beachhead market? This is a very important uh, decision to make and one that people um, kind of spend a lot of time thinking about and ask a lot of questions. First, let me say, I'm going to go through the seven criteria to choose it. But when you choose a beachhead market, it's a gut feel. But also let me say that this is not necessarily a, a, an algorithm, an equation, because there can be many paths to success. Um, the, you have to choose one that will be successful. There will be some that won't be successful, but there's many paths to success. The path to failure is to n sit there and analyze them indefinitely. We need to have a bias to action to try things out. And the second thing I will say is that we can't, once we make it, we're going to chase this beachhead market down to the end and then try it. The other thing, by the way, the, a, a sure path to failure is to try to do all the options at the same time. We don't have the resources to do that. So let's look at how do you choose a beachhead market. The first criteria is, as you remember, well, is well funded. As you recall, when we started this, the single necessary and sufficient condition for a business is a paying customer. We have to keep that in our mind. But we don't just want to have one paying customer. We want to have many paying customers. But paying customers is very important. So the first criteria is, do they have money? There are many things that we want to do that are good for society, and we as entrepreneurs want to change the world. But we have to start with people who can fund us to get the business off the ground. We want to make a sustainable, economically viable business that does not depend on handouts or charity from people. We're going to look for customers that are well funded to get this going. Later on, we might be able to move to other customers that are not as well funded. But initially, it's critically important that our, our beachhead market be well funded. Secondly, we have to have ready access to this customer set. They might be a great customer, but if we can't talk to them, if we can't show them what we, we do, they're not viable to us. And you might say, well, that's obvious. We can get to them. It's a lot easier today than it was previously. But there are many places where you'd have a great value proposition, but the distribution channel cuts you off, or the entrenched players will not allow you to talk to them. So, it's an important uh, consideration to think about whether you have ready access. The third is, do you have a compelling value proposition? And we're going to talk more about value proposition later and how to, how to measure that. But the, our target customer has to have a compelling reason to buy. It can't be 10% better. It's got to be 2x, 3x better. It's got to be significantly better. So that would be the third. The fourth is, and this is one that's very interesting, we need to be able to offer the whole product. And a lot of people say, no, 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 I can't do that. That's too much. But let me tell you, when you're a startup company, you're fighting against forces that are very large. They are the defenders. They have more. They're not, they don't want to see you come out here and create a new market and disrupt their market. But the whole product is essential because that entrenched hierarchy is going to prevent you from doing that. So you need to have ready access to a well-funded customer with a compelling value proposition, but not tell them, hey, here's a carburetor. Put this in your car and do it, because they don't want to buy a carburetor. Most of the customers out there, they want to buy a car that provides them superior transportation. So you need to figure out, even if it's just at the beginning, how you're going to offer a, a whole product as opposed to just part of a product. I'll give you an example. Uh, Geox had a uh, ability to put a technology in a shoe that allowed it to breathe. They went around to all the different shoe ma makers, sneaker makers, Adidas, New Balance, Nike, and, and they tried to sell them this. They, they did not want to buy this technology. So what Geox was forced to do was to create their own shoe to sell it. And lo and behold, when they did that, the customers embraced it. But that was not their first choice. They had to learn by trial and error that a whole product was the way to go. And I would suggest you think about this as well. Fifth is, what does a competition look like? And you might think you're superior to the competition that's out there. But what does a customer think? 
is your is your substantially better than the alternatives they have today the biggest competitor to you may be doing nothing for the customer that's a very viable and probably the most dangerous one for you but if there are other competitors out there are you superior to them in reality reality is great but are is there competitors who are perceive who perceive you as a competitor who will block you from getting um, a chance to do this business the sixth one is can we leverage this, leverage this beachhead market to gain additional markets that are attractive to us? Is this a strategic beachhead that when we capture it, it leads us into additional markets? Or is it we just capturing a rock and it doesn't lead to anything? The, the seventh one is, I'll put over here, is personal alignment. And this is one that's very important. We can analyze all these things and they all make sense. It can leverage us to it. We can, we can see that we're better than the competitor if in reality and in perception. Uh, we can provide the whole product, we know that. But unless it's aligned with our personal goals, our personal objectives, our passions, our values, then it's not necessarily a good market. And this is an important consideration as you do it. As I said, when we're looking at a beachhead market, we're going to analyze it rationally. There may be many opportunities out there, but in our gut, we've got to know that this is something that we want to do for the next six years of our life. So don't forget number seven. I should say that, by the way, this, the things that I'm talking about build off what you see in Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey Moore and Inside the Tornado. And I found that very, very helpful, and that's one of the readings that I would recommend to you in, as you go through this, uh, this lecture. But, um, and we've added to that here, but that's how you choose a beachhead market.